Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Uh, we are in unusual times today. We're working out the logistics of our time here. I have an iPad and I noticed that our go-to meeting is about a quarter of a second different from the live feed, so there's a bit of an echo. We are experimenting with the protocols. Do we wear masks when we're outside? How close can we be? Where should I stand with the sun? Should I stand with the sun? I stand with the sun in front of me or to the side. There are lots of ready access to the scriptures. I heard stories this week of Christians in various parts of the world. Hey, Eric. You're breaking up very badly. You have to share copies of the Bible and give a Bible to one. Okay, so I'm breaking up. I understand. Okay. Eric, you're going to have to move. What I may do to the is now that we've now. done this uh, experiment. Since I'm breaking up, uh, I have the computer ready to go inside, so I will now quickly pivot to one. Peter, in his first letter, said the following. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. As I was saying before, I was informed that I was breaking up. I heard a story this week that in some parts of the world, in this case, it was some mountainous areas of the Philippines. There was an area where Bibles were not available. And a group had to share a copy of the Bible. And one preacher would travel many miles over mountainous territory to pick up that copy and share it with other people. And so the chain went. I don't know when this event happened. I may have the detail wrong, but brothers and sisters throughout history have had to endure hardship at various times in practice of their faith. Paul was called as an apostle first to the Jew and also to the Gentiles. He would always go first to the synagogue and persuade those in attendance that Jesus was the Christ, proclaimed in the law and the prophets. But the pattern was that soon resistance, often violent resistance, would start arising to Paul's message. And Paul, out of concern for his life, 
had to go to the next town, the next city. And he would continue to preach there until he was compelled to go to the next city. Paul, at the appointed time, was compelled to go to Jerusalem. Many brothers and sisters in the direction and knowledge of the Holy Spirit implored Paul not to go to Jerusalem because they knew that Paul would face bitter opposition. And yet Paul knew that to this he was called. He said he knew that he would likely face opposition in Jerusalem. But he said, I'm not only prepared to be imprisoned, but even to die for the sake of the gospel. As we pick up the narrative in Acts chapter 23, He is before the Jewish ruling council that has gathered in order to consider charges against Paul. And Paul is allowed to present his case before that group. And he says, I appear before you today with a clear conscience. And even after this beginning, even after this opening, there was something about Paul's testimony and even presence in Jerusalem that was not pleasing to the council. And it says that the high priest commanded those who stood by Paul to strike him in the mouth, which they did. The high priest was present and those in attendance took Paul's words as being offensive to the high priest. Would you revile God's high priest? And Paul said, I did not know, brothers, that he was the high priest. For it is written, you shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. Paul looked around at those who were gathered, and he saw that within this Jewish ruling council, there was a group of those who aligned with the Sadducees, some with the Pharisees. The Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection of the dead, whereas the Pharisees do. Paul introduced himself. He says, I, I'm a Pharisee, and it is respect to the hope and the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial. And somehow these words were such that those of the Pharisees party said, we find nothing wrong with him. But then, the decision, the, those who were gathered, it says the discussion became violent and the tribune who had delivered Paul to this council became worried for Paul's safety. 
he commanded the soldiers that were present to go down and take him from among them by force and bring him into the barracks. We then learn in Acts 23 that the council continues to deliberate and they develop a plot to ask the authorities to bring Paul once again before the Jewish ruling council, at which point a large number of them are sitting ready to ambush and kill Paul. Somehow Paul's nephew, the son of Paul's sister, it's interesting to know that Paul had a sister and a nephew who were in Jerusalem. It's an interesting detail that we might not have appreciated. But somehow, Paul's nephew heard about this plot. He informed the Tribune, and the Tribune took evasive action to raise up a large security detail to bring Paul to the next appointed destination. What I would like for us to gather from this is that Paul had a deep sense of calling. In the case of Paul, it was to bear witness to Jesus. And specifically in this chapter, he says, it is because of my hope in the resurrection from the dead that I am before you today. Paul preached Christ crucified, but also Christ risen. And whatever God led him to do to bear witness to Jesus, he would do. We have also some precious words here directly from God to Paul. After this confrontation with the Jewish ruling council, the text says the following night, the Lord stood by him and said, take courage for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. God assured Paul that he would protect Paul and see him through to the end of his mission. Paul was able to write to Timothy. He says, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I have kept the faith. In times of chaos, our call is to live to the glory of Christ. There's a wonderful sense in which God put Paul's nephew at just the right place at just the right time. And he may have been putting himself at risk by letting the tribune know, know of the plot that was against Paul. And yet he fulfilled his calling in that time of chaos. And so it is with each of you. God has put each of you in a mission field. And God is calling you to bear witness 
to the cross of Christ, to the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin, but not just Christ crucified, but Christ risen from the dead, the hope of all who will put their trust in him. And even if it re requires hardship, even if it requires courage and suffering, we are called to follow in the path of Christ. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, giving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Whatever God calls us to do, whether it is to testify in front of a council, whether it is to deliver some important news, whether it is to minister to the sick, whether it is to teach the children in public schools, whatever it is that God has called us to live as Christians in chaotic times may require sacrifice, even suffering. But God assures us that he will see us through to the end. To him be glory. Praise God and grace and peace to each of you.